Blessings. Hi. Catherine here. It's Rosie. Happy new moon. Happy super new moon. And um, thank you for joining us today. I know we have plenty of things to share. And, um, you know, again, it's bringing in the um, intentions of looking at powerful thoughts and also planting those new seeds that we have been sitting with perhaps this past year. And so um, looking into that, I wanted for us to kind of share with you how our journey's been since our full moon. Knowing that this is the empowerment series, we're kind of going from where we started two weeks ago and now who we, like where we're at now, what we've noticed, what we've liberated, what we've released, and what we're actually going to be moving forward with. And knowing that our journey is ongoing, we're always going to be learning through every single experience we go through. But um, creating this empowerment series is to bring the integration of our personal life and, you know, the realization, the truth of as being human. And then, yeah, what is going on planetarily? You know, what's going on with the moon? What's going on on that level, too? And how it actually does affect us. So anything you'd like to share on that note, Lizzie? Um, what kind of things came up for everyone and what kind of new ideas have sparked um, for you all and I know I have had lots of shifts and personal awarenesses and seeds that I'm planting in my personal life and I look forward to sharing what those things are and seeing what comes up for everyone else yeah so kind of sitting back from actually I'm going to just scoot this back just a little bit so we can have so first off I know um, the full moon experience was a bit intense and you know going through that sense of like a lot of things surfacing up a lot of things for us to look at mm -hmm. and then um going through that sense of completion and diving into this new moon what i felt to you know just having the awareness of that happening but also being aware too like okay you know what i'm going through that shit but now how can i take the next step how can I actually release those old habits and those old patterns that, you know, I've been constant um, sitting with for some time? It's like it was an old story that just kept repeating. Mm -hmm. And I know one of my um, practices and what I continue to learn from my brothers and sisters is definitely being in meditation, definitely going out, to, out in nature and um also, recently, I've actually sat with, you know, doing a little bit more purgatives, you know, just kind of bringing in the physical piece. And that's really important when we're bringing in the physical piece, because when we're cleansing our bowels, right, you know, our core, our, our intestines holds a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. holds a lot of shit, holds a lot of old things, too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's actually been a lot of people that spoke about um, you can hold things from seven years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I started to cleanse out my intestines so I can start letting go of those old ideas mm -hmm. and it's giving me another way of how to look at it, another way to see those old patterns that were showing up, those old stories that were like, all right, I thought I resolved that, I thought I looked at that. And, and what's good is it came up, but now I'm taking another approach, I'm taking another way of how to look at it. And I'm not going to say it was easy because it's, it is difficult and it is a process and we are human and that's where we need to be really mindful as we take these steps in life. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm not sure if like, what would you like to say on how that was for you as well? Yeah, it was, um, for me, I realized that um, I was holding on to a lot of self-doubt and... Um, I also, like a part of my practice is as an Ayurvedic practitioner and into the holistic picture um, in general, I also um, do have a, a regimen of purging and it comes in many shapes <laughs> and sizes <laughs> um, from throwing out old t-shirts and socks to, um, to taking a purgative at night to have a big poop in the morning. <laughs> and to also uh, working with the plant medicine and um, doing a, a purge 
of the upper channels, lower channels, or energetic purge um, on the physical plane, mental plane, spiritual plane. So it's a, it's a continuous practice. And so I was able to uh, feel um, somewhat a little more empowered because I was clearing out those things from the old, from the full moon that kind of built up this accumulation of this energy just kind of coming out and just me looking at that going, wow, you know, I can do this and it, it's really not so bad. Yeah, it was intense at first and I'm like, I can get on the other side of that. And so when I was able to get on the other side of that, then as the moon started shifting into its phases and waxing and waning, waning into this new moon, then I was able to see how the representation of what we're trying to call in kind of can play in. Because if we're holding on to things and things are just stuck in us and our energy body and our, our, our thoughts or in our, or in our colon, then it's like you, you can't get past it's a block so it's a physical block or it's an energetic block mm -hmm. and then we're not going to be able to see what seeds that we're picking from that are, could be old things that we've wanted to cultivate it could be a new idea and how can we plant that how can we um instill that into our our life and into like the coming phases of our of our evolution and is it a daily practice um so i i feel like that was um a big piece for me as it like as i'm bringing it all together here live mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and seeing what that sounds like and i think that sounds pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just kind of like you know just like how our title is it's you know our powerful thoughts is planting new seeds and our first of all our thoughts are extremely powerful now being latina i'm not sure if y'all heard of male ojo you know when you give someone the bad eye when you actually think negative of someone that's actually male ojo you're giving them the bad eye so they can have negative ripples happening in their life mm -hmm. and the truth is, is that, yeah, we have extremely powerful thoughts. What are our thoughts right now? Now that we shifted and became aware or, are, or we are noticing, wow, these are old thoughts. So how can we shift it? What is it that I'm doing so that I can begin to, you know, create more of a flower blossoming or more of like, you know what? I want to think more positive. Mm -hmm. How can I think more positive? How can I be more positive? And just that intention alone of you creating that is um, that intention alone is allowing those ripples of positive thoughts to come in. And that's where we want to be sitting with. We want to be allowing ourselves to really plant that seed, set the intentions. Like I want to have a much loving relationship with my partner or I want to call in a new partner I want to call in a partner or a loved one I want to create more abundance in my life these are all thoughts like as compared to why am I having this why is this experience happening to me why am I not having a communication or connection with my significant other or why isn't that person coming into my life so those are thoughts alone. So we want to definitely give ourselves that chance to shift it and call in the sense of like, you know what? I know that there is a loving partner out there. I know that I can communicate better. We can communicate Where better. Where are you? <laughs> and, and Come on. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. <laughs> That's the seed. That's one seed for me. <laughs> and so there you go. You're initiating. <laughs> you're setting the intention for that significant other, for that partner. And then you have the abundance. You know, I know we have a lot of situations too in life where we're like, why isn't there a good amount of funds in my life? How is it that we can support it? So acknowledging that, we want to you know, begin to look at how is our thoughts? What is the repeated thoughts that come in? Okay, because they are powerful. And write it out. Let it out of your head. Put it on paper and be like, whoa, are these serving me or are these just old? Okay, 
and um, I'm not sure if you want to piggyback on something on that level, but um, well, I kind of wanted to get into more or less what it what this new moon represents. Just want to remind everybody, it's a it's a doozy, um, and it's a super new moon, so it's like super like seed sowing things, um, and it's it's the twins. It's in Gemini, so it's that that buying for equal attention from your emotions and your intuition, that logic and reason. And how does that play into um, the things that we want to cultivate? Um, now that we're clear of the shadow of the retrogrades, that was in the coming days before um, this point, which was actually the new moon physically came into our sphere yesterday around 12.45. So I don't know what you were feeling yesterday around between 11 and 1, but that was like a really powerful time and to be like in that zone. Um, but it really extends like the day before and the day after. So that in case you're working, then you can like work on your intentions. Um, and also, you know, um, so new moon, what that means in case for people that kind of need a little um, reminder, it means it's a representation of a cycle and it's time to make um, a fresh start those new projects that we all want. Um, a space of intention setting, new goals. And so kind of like a reminder from like the last podcast we had had, um, if you have a goal, um, is it your mission? And is your mission equal passion? Is, you, is that your passion for you? Um, and are those goals attainable? Um, because if we're working within a lunar cycle, there's a, actually a lot we can accomplish in a month. Um, it seems, doesn't seem like a lot of time, but it really is a lot of time. You know, it's 28 to, 30, 28 to 30 days. It's a lot of time to initiate a big change. And um, regardless of what our experiences have been in the past, whether we've experienced trauma, we've experienced grief in our life, um, if that happens to be a goal, that you want to set forth as far as um, moving out of that place of grief and trauma, then there's a lot of things that you can do for that. For example, it, as simple as it may sound, is um, journaling and setting an, a, a, an intention in, in pen and paper mm -hmm. that you want to let, let go of this grief. And you'll start to see things in your body soften. And developing a practice. I mean, start moving the energy in your body, whatever that resonates with you. Because that all has to do with how the energy is flowing and how the energy around our intentions is going to be manifested. So, um, is it, you know, again, going back to that contrast of the Gemini, the twins, for the representation of this new moon, um, you know, and tapping into that emotion, tapping into what that sweet intuition is for your for you um and taking advantage of the fact that we don't have any planets in retrograde right now it's like let's sneak in there and do some of this work you know what i mean so <laughs> back to me <laughs> well you know so when it comes down to all of that and and keeping in mind our thoughts you know, I'm not too familiar with Geminis. I know my father's a Gemini and um, very unique one, actually. <laughs> but, you know, when I look at these two faces that these Gemini has, they actually are two faces that face themselves, too. And so we are looking at how is it that we talk to ourselves? Okay, how is it that we talk to our heart, to our body, to our essence, to our spirit? And that is really important when it comes down to that because, um, like, like I mentioned, our thoughts are very powerful. So when we're looking at that element, when we're looking at that piece, we then, all right, now that we shift into knowing that it's not just us in this world, but then how is it that we're communicating with others too? How is it that I'm communicating with my sister? How is it I'm communicating with my parents, to a coworker, to a client, and then to the world? You know, what are those posts that you put on Facebook, you know, and how deep and true is it for you? Is it only showing half of where you're at? And if it is, then, okay, where is the other half? How can you communicate with the other half at the same time? So keeping in mind and heart of like keeping like 
everything into awareness that you want to be communicating with all, all parts of who you are because it is that layer of you know our thoughts our being what's in our mind what's sitting there i know <clears throat> Um, going through this transition and going into this new moon, there was this piece that was coming up for me of feeling this old pattern of thinking. And that old pattern of thinking was showing up through how I have connections with the masculine energy. And it's pretty deep for me. And it's something that I know, like, okay, I'm, I know I'm still healing that and I know it's going to take some time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. And the people that are in our lives help us too, you know? And even, even when we're going through a struggle, we may put the, you know, we may point the finger at this person, like this person's causing me pain, but actually that pain that we're sitting with and that's bringing it up, like really sit with what is the pain that you're actually feeling so that it doesn't build into something that gets embedded into your body, into your emotional body. And this is where thoughts triggers it, okay? So when these thoughts are coming in, we want to liberate them. We don't want to set them free. We want to be aware that they exist, but we also want to set them free. So when it comes down, like we mentioned, like these thoughts, we're planting new seeds. And even just the, the, the idea and the intention, like I just want to set them free. I don't want to continue thinking that way. I want to trust what I'm doing. And it, you, by you trusting what you're doing, you are trusting in yourself, your heart, and that is where you want to be at. And it takes time, and it takes a process, and it also takes another human being to join you on that journey. <laughs> you know, because we didn't come here alone. Our mama birthed us, you know? We didn't just appear out of thin air. So we actually, it, in order for us to be birthed into this earth, it had to come through another human body. So keep that in mind, like who is your community, who is your friends, and granted there might be certain friends you might, may be able to communicate certain things, and that's okay, and that's one thing I had, I'm learning, I'm learning a lot on that level. There's different friends and different family members that I connect with certain things, and that is okay, because we have different parts of who we are, and we're here to hold space for one another. So I know we're in the last few minutes, and I want to make sure that, you know, um, Rosie, if you want to add in more into it, but, like, bringing in the tools now, you know, like, want to talk about the, the final tools before we shift over. So, yeah, I, I definitely want to um, support Kat's um, uh, suggestion about med sitting in meditation or prayer, because that's a, a focused um, alignment with the divine, and you can receive so much information from that and so much clarity and support and writing things down and making like if you can't think of if you have, if you have too many things just think of the top three things that you see that you want to sow over this next cycle um or at least that can be seeds that you're planting with your th your intention um that can maybe take longer to flourish it may not just be over a month it may be over six months or a year or longer um, or it, you can do some longer term goals and you can do some shorter term goals and it could be anything it could be i just want my house to be cleaner <laughs> you know i just want to drink more water in a day you know because i want to be healthier oh or i just want <laughs> i just want to um go to yoga three times a week or go running or whatever you do um, whatever it is, just like the thought that you're actually thinking about that you want to do, these things are already setting like the energy in motion that's like ahead of you already. So that's already a process, a progress into what your intentions are for the this this full moon that's kind of propelling us into that space of like you know of time and momentum and. Um, so writing them down, starting with small, small bite-size intentions that lead to bigger things, and then your meditation prayer. I think those are three big things um, that is going to go really a long way for a lot of people. They don't sound like a big deal, but they really are a big deal. And when you start putting that into practice and you start really paying attention to what's going on 
in your life and how things kind of trickle down from all these things that you're doing, that you're thinking, and that you're feeling, then the magic starts to happen. Mm -hmm. And then you start to see the results. Like when the next full moon comes and then you're like going through that intensity again, then, you know, at least you have something to kind of like scoop you up and propel you in a smoother way for the intensity of like when the new moon, when the full moon comes and, and you don't have as much stuff to um, release, you know, or maybe you have a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't realize from this portion of the intentions that you really want to release. Mm -hmm. So I would work with that. That's what I do. <laughs> and I would love to hear from you guys. And if you want to share, and I, we have somebody that's sharing, I thank you for sharing. And any other questions or things that you guys want to do um, or want to see us talk about, you know, we're down for that. So um, actually, thank you for sharing as far as like, I'm actually reviewing the questions right now. And it looks like what happened if the C's that we think of is trauma from our past and that we want to forget. And like I was mentioning earlier is releasing them out writing them out, putting them onto paper, letting them go. And um, one of the tools to... Burning them in a fire. Yeah. When you put them, when you put it into paper... Dale fuego, mija. Que malo. <laughs> and just... Um, and when it comes down to that, like if you go to the gym or if you're doing yoga and you go into these intense postures in yoga, which you keep this in mind, it's a really good tip that I've been working on. I was just there. <laughs> And you're in these tense postures, or if you're on the treadmill, or if you're like, like sweating it, and you're like working really hard, and you're like, oh my god, this posture is intense. Bring that thought in your like in your front of your face, and you sweat it out, and you let it go. You let it go right there because you are purging it out through your pores. But like, I'm letting this shit go. I'm letting it go. And you, in your running, or if you're either biking or if you're hiking or if you're whatever it is let it go because when your physical body is going through that tense moment that intense shift of sweating and preparing the muscles and releasing or energy that shaking to, that you feel a lot of people say that that shaking is trauma releasing and um, a lot of my teachers in yoga have taught me the Kali breath so look up Kali breath. K-A-L-A breath. And yeah, and so those are opportunities there where when you are doing these physical movement things and that in Ayurveda, physical, muscular, we're looking at pitta, we're looking at fire. So we are burning them, we are releasing them and we are letting it go, okay? So fire goes through the house as our teacher says, Diana. And it comes from our core and it lives, just let it out of your head, let it out of your body, let it out of your mind, out of your spirit, out of your being. Because there is more space there that can be there to be loved and to be cared for and to bring light and bring in new opportunities, new ways to plant new seeds or even the seeds that you have been. So if you like drawing, if you like poetry, if you like um, playing games or you know, attending certain things, tap into your creativity because that is what's going to feed your spirit. That is what's going to feed your soul. And that is also going to feed the seeds that you're planting. Okay? So, um, I know we're at time. Thank you so much for joining us. And know that uh, our empowerment series is going to continue on for the next, um, for the next month. And it will be, the next one will be on the full moon. Give yourself 21 days to do a practice, okay? Because 21 days is when our mind, our neurons, everything, that's when we actually, like, it gets registered into our being and into, like, creating that change in our life. So if you're doing... It takes 21 days to develop a healthy habit. So you have to re continue to repeat it um, for that many days for it to stick in your, like, subconscious. Yeah. So give yourself 21 days dedicatedly. And even if you're like, Oh my God, I'm on day five. I don't know if I can do it. Just continue 
breathe give yourself that opportunity even if you're 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 stretch, stretching for like 15 minutes in the morning if you don't have time to do a workout but see if you can do that consistently and um, on YouTube you can look up um, pranayama breathing and there's alternate nostril breathing. I would look that up and I would look up Kali. C. it's K-A-L-I. So it's a uh, Kali breath. So look that up. And um, those are two things for homework <laughs> to look up. And you're not going to mess up. doesn't matter. And yeah, and please post if you have any questions. And we'll definitely fill it in in our next series. Many blessings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bendiciones. Hasta la próxima. Hasta okay. La próxima. Ciao. Nos vemos. <laughs>